the down low on the QT. Now I get a lot of questions from people on when do I worry about the QT? How long is too long? And what do I do with it if it's too long? Now, my name is Jen Carlquist, and I'm going to answer all these questions for you today. I've been a cardiology PA for the last 16 years and also have worked in ER medicine for the last 16 years. And I'm super excited to be collaborating with all of the collaborators you're seeing here, including CardioVisual, and thank you for having me. So let's dive into it. The numbers you need to know are here. How long is too long? So if you have a male 450 and up, 450 milliseconds and up is too long. If you have a female, it's 460. Now, what do you do with this information in real life? Basically, if you want to just remember 460, it makes your life so much easier because that way you just have one thing to remember, 460. Because you're realistically, you're not going to do much between 450 and 460 anyway. The next thing you need to know is where to find the QT interval. So this is an EKG that has our intervals here, and this is the QT here. It's 457, and you're only going to use the QTC. You're never going to use just the QT because it's uncorrected for rate. So if this was 457, we're in the sweet spot, and we don't need to worry at this time. The risk of having a long QT is what you see here on the screen, torsades de point. And what this is, is basically a twisting of the points. It's a flavor of VTAC where the points twist back and forth, and it looks like a ballerina ribbon that was twisted around. And this is what we're always concerned is gonna happen when somebody has a prolonged QT. Now, what number are you most concerned about this happening? Well, that threshold is usually 500 milliseconds. It can happen under that though. And so if you have somebody who has a QT that's under 500, you still have to worry about it and make adjustments to prevent this from happening. Because once this happens, patients can either have cardiac arrest or they can just have a syncopal episode at the very best. But either way, this is not a good situation. This is why I really believe that med recs are a good thing. So why does the QT get long? There's a few reasons, and one of them is congenital. This is the most rare. It's usually going to be either drug-induced or there's going to be a problem with the electrolytes. Those problems could be low calcium, low mag, and low potassium as well. So this is why a CMP or even just a BMP is super important when you have a patient who has prolonged QT. Also looking at their med list. There are a lot of meds that can actually cause prolonged QT. There are so many, they actually dedicated a whole website to it. So I got to tell you that when I was first digging into this as a new medic, new provider, I was overwhelmed by all the drugs. So I looked for some good resources. Here they are. There's two of them I like. The first is a website. It's qtdrugs.org. And the next is an app called Credible Meds both free, they're both great resources, but in a nutshell, I will tell you that it is probably easier to go in and look through all the medications that you will interact with in a shift, for example, wherever you work, and know those meds. Things like some of the antibiotics, Thermax is one, some of the antiemetics, Zofran is a big one, so the two Zs, and then looking at some of the other ones like the antidepressants and looking through the list, figuring out which ones are important that you need to know. Otherwise, if you see a med and you're not sure, you can always reference either of these two. We've talked about the length that makes someone at risk, but there's also other risk factors. For example, females have a higher risk of going into torsades from prolonged QT. Add that to someone being on multiple QT prolonging meds, that's when you really get in trouble. The risk keeps climbing and climbing and climbing. If they have hypokalemia, definitely bank on having a prolonged QT. So hypokalemia from a bunch of vomiting, for example, and then if they're female and they're on multiple QT prolonging medications, like let's just say they're on Zofran, they're on Celexa, maybe they're on an antibiotic, it's definitely someone who's primed for this to happen. And they happen to have a history of a prolonged QT interval, then you would definitely have them on your radar for sure. Now, usually these patients know they have it 
and there's a strong family history of it, and lots of their relatives have defibrillators. And that's kind of how you know that, oh, maybe that seizure wasn't really a seizure. Maybe it was actually Versad step one. So let's do a case to wrap this up and really dig into what we've learned. So this is not a real patient's face, but it was a real case. This was a 50-year-old female who called EMS because it felt like the water ran out of me. Now, that's an odd complaint, but she definitely did have incontinence, which is concerning for her having some sort of loss of consciousness and or seizure, right? And had a history of neck surgery, was on multiple medications, including medications for depression and chronic pain, one of them being methadone. Now, that's a clue because methadone, as you know, is very prolonging. So here is what happened. EMS got her later down the gurney. She actually had to be assisted because she was about to have a near sinkable. They quickly put the monitor on her, noticed that she was in torsades. They administered therapy. She arrived to the ER with a CKG. This was her door time EKG. And you can see that her QT right here was 519, which is way over 460. It is so long that the machine actually notices it. So I did want to give you a tip on how to determine if you don't have the QT interval, what the length is. And there's a really easy way to do this. And I just basically grab a paper and pen, I've been doing this for a long time, even when I was on the ambulance. And I go over and I measure from R to R, okay? And I make a line down the, oh, that's not that good of a line, but let's just pretend that was straight, drawing with the mouse. And if your T wave, which is right here, is halfway, when you're R and R, that's definitely prolonged. So you would know that you, you need to know what this QT is on this patient. And the way that you can look at this visually is just knowing that T wave is the mom, the curious is the dad, T wave is the baby, and the T wave should be nice and close to its own dad. I've really enjoyed hanging out with you today. I hope that now you can walk away armed with some really quick, fast, and easy knowledge on how to spot prolonged QT, what the risks are, who's at risk, references you can use, and what to do about it. I hope to see you soon.